Hello, comic fans. Here's Earl Grey. Um, there's a German saying that goes, um, bringing owls to Athens. Uh, I looked it up um, to get some decent translation for it. Uh, bringing coals to Newcastle or bringing sand to the beach. In a way, that's what I'm trying to uh, do right now today, um, because telling comic fans about Asterix is like bringing sand to the beach, uh, preaching to the choir, um, obviously, especially over here where uh, comics is almost synonymous uh, with um, Asterix, at least for my generation. Uh, this was and is still by far the most popular uh, comic. Um, when I talk to uh, peers of my generation, uh, we can share uh, quotes without uh, ever even acknowledging where it comes from. Uh, Morituri te salutam, uh, alea jacta est, all these Latin phrase, phrases. If you had Latin in school or not, hey, welcome, this is Luis the comic cat. <laughs> um, say hello. She's the, uh, the, she's the true star in our family here. Look. She likes comics, she likes Star Trek, she's really cool. Um, so where was I? This huge stack of Asterix comics has stayed uh, with me since my early childhood. I guess this first volume is even a bit older. Um, looks that way, of course. It's from yeah, 1968. Uh, the French original dates back to 1961. Wikipedia says uh, Asterix the little star um, started in 1959 um, with the ser serialization in Pilot, uh, the French magazine, of course. Uh, here we have our heroes for the very first time. Obelix not as fat, uh, as obese <laughs> as in later issues and Asterix maybe not as small as in later issues, both a bit clumsily drawn maybe, but already they're into this kind of uh, cloppering the Romans uh, stuff. And you have here already um, the combination of yeah, ipso facto Latin quotes, uh, so some references to more high culture and pure slapstick nonsense, which um, was very for compelling for me as a kid and all my um, friends and, and neighbors and, and kids in school, classmates. We are all loved uh, Asterix for this kind of stuff. And the older ones, they loved um, Asterix for different reasons. For an example, my priest, uh, where I, when I did my confirmation, he was an absolute Asterix fan. And he always said, Asterix is actually a comic for adults. No, it's for all. Uh, ages because it gives you uh, this uh, light-hearted nonsense but uh, yeah, some allusions and references to paintings and Shakespeare and other literature uh, that makes it really fun for all ages and, and um, you get not just a glimpse but a real deep view into the historian times obviously seen through a comic -y, uh, cartoon -y filter, but it's, to be honest with you, it's 90% of my imagination of how the Roman Empire and uh, the time back then was, comes from Asterix, and I think of me as no exception in that regard. What I want to do with you right now is go through the stack here, almost complete stack of uh, pretty beaten up copies of Asterix. I won't upgrade or trade them in uh, for newer, more fancy hardcover editions or uh, stuff like that, because this is really how this comic here feels for me. Uh, very worn. I, maybe I drew this uh, in my childhood, maybe my brother, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we really abused this book here, but we read Asterix over and over again, tens or twelve times with that's no exaggeration, really, uh, until we knew almost each panel by heart. So this is the Golden Sickle, Asterix and the Goths, which is, of course, their visit to Germany way back then. 
Asterix as a Gladiator, and you can see uh, this is not uh, an album, um, but I stapled together the serialized comic. It was serialized in a German magazine called Ips. Uh, it was published each week. Uh, you got it with other great comics like Lucky Luke, for instance, and, and other Franco-Belgian stuff. This is uh, the Kangaroo Ips, by the way. Um, each week with some kind of cheap toy uh, that came with it. Today's uh, the, the newsstands is full of the stuff here, but they were the first. And these toys were actually not as bad uh, um, way back then. So, but you can see here uh, the the lettering is uh, really not uh, up to today's standards. Um, but as a kid, you really didn't care about all that stuff. So Continuing with the next album, and in my mind, it's the first real masterpiece of them. Oh, uh, I haven't even mentioned them. Drawings by Alberto Uderzo and text by René Gossini, of course. And they send our heroes through a journey through France. So we can witness uh, the different regions and cities of France way back then. So here we have uh, Asterix and Cleopatra. Again, uh, torn out of my old Ips zines and stapled together. This is already a classic with uh, Cleopatra and her very beautiful nose. And <laughs> again, in my mind, in my little mind, uh, this portrait of a uh, ancient Egypt has stuck with me. So when I always when I go into the museum and see some kind of Egyptian art, I can't help myself but compare it and, and put it in context uh, with uh, the stuff that I've learned from Asterix way back then. Uh, I was so convinced that all of you know at, uh, at least uh, one thing or two about Asterix. I ha even haven't mentioned the basic premise of uh, Asterix and Obelix, which is, of course, um, yeah, in, in Roman uh, times, when, when all France was conquered by the Roman Empire, there was still a little village in the northwestern part of France um, here that uh, fought back. And uh, they could do because of some magic potion that made them super strong. So, uh, whenever the Romans tried to uh, conquer this little village, they got pretty well beaten up. Uh, and our heroes were sent through all the ancient world to live through strange and funny adventures. And do some homage uh, here and there to other comics like Franquin's, Franquin's, uh, nice comic creation, the animal, the fantasy animal, Mazupilami. And here we have, uh, just in one panel, Mazupilami. Next up, Asterix uh, in England or in Great Britain. Uh, and this is really a cornucopia of references and allusions. Uh, here, for instance, you have the Beatles and their freaked out fans. If you forget about uh, the pretty crude lettering here, uh, what the German translations did pretty well was, um, yeah, to keep this, um, the fun that um, uh, René Goscinny had with the English language, um, always adding up at the end, isn't it, is it, and uh, and so on. And a lot of stuff more, uh, of, of course, how tea was invented, for an instance, and, and so on. Asterix and the Normans, the Vikings, Asterix as a Legionnaire, maybe one of my favorite stories here. Oh, however you pronounce this, Asterix and the uh, Shield of the Avernus. Next up is Asterix at the Olympic Games. Um, oh, I gave this once uh, to a pupil to do some kind of blow up. You 
you know, I guess the trick uh, so that you can uh, make a poster sized uh, painting out of this here. I don't know if I regret this, but here we have another example. Um, but I think the pupils did well, so no harm done. Next up is uh, the cauldron made out of copper, or whatever the correct translation for that title here is. In it we find a um, portrait, or rather caricature, of Valérie uh, Giscard d'Estaing, the Minister of Finance way back then of France, um, here as some kind of evil tax collector. He later on became uh, the French president, of course. So this is the stuff that made um, Asterix pop very popular uh, amongst the adults as well, of course. Um, maybe not so if you're a very big fan of uh, Giscard d'Estaing. Maybe even then. I don't know. So, and here we have... What's that? Ah, Asterix in Spain. And this is a really rough stapled copy and not uh, complete. And as in almost each and every Asterix, we have some allusions to literature and stuff like that. Uh, for instance, here we have Don Quixote and his uh, Sancho Panza, his uh, henchman, you would say. Fight around or about Asterix and Asterix in Switzerland and be prepared whenever you uh, will eat uh, cheese fondue over here in Germany. There will be someone uh, cracking some joke out of this very comic, even and in particular uh, uh, if it is someone who hasn't read um, a comic in years. Album number 17, The Satellite City or Satellite Town, is used by some of my colleagues uh, again and again uh, to um, teach the subject of city planning and urban management and stuff like that in class and talking about stuff that I for myself use here uh, within the Laurels of Caesar uh, are some visual quotes the Laocon group that you can visit and see in the Vatican Museums here this guy over there On kind of the same note is uh, some Rembrandt quote in Asterix and uh, the Seer, the visionary. Uh, here we have a, a reference to a painting of Rembrandt, The Anatomy of Dr. Tulp, um, which is quite fun. So have I here. Ah, oh, yeah, here this is Asterix on Corsica some other staple together comic Caesar's gift and then we have die große überfahrt the big journey or however it uh, the english version is called uh, the discovery of america basically and therefore we have at one point in the story obelix mimicking the um, statue of liberty if i remember correctly Let's see, the, this book here is falling apart. Uh, many pages. But let's see if I can find it. Well, here it is. Uh, and it's not Obelix, uh, but Asterix. Uh, in this classic pose here. Oh, well, this is maybe the only example when I bought actually a more decent copy afterwards because this was so destroyed here. And here we have Obelix uh, founding some kind of industry with uh, his uh, stones that he <laughs> allegedly uh, created. And it's funny how um, the tropes and premises of Asterix uh, has followed me through my life because um, Earlier we lived in, um, in a region that was once the uh, border region between uh, the uh, Roman Empire and uh, 
the Germans. Um, so we have, uh, I, I studied for an instance in uh, a town called Mainz, which was Moguns Jakum in, in uh, Roman times. Uh, so there's a cornucopia of um, relics and, and, and stuff that you can see in the museum and a lot of history that dates way back then. And now I live in more northern regions of Germany where we all ha everywhere have these huge uh, stones that were transported by glaciers uh, um, in, in uh, the Ice Age. So uh, wherever you look around uh, you can find stuff that relates uh, to our days today uh, in a way. Here you have a stack of these um, stones. Uh, some kind of a good lesson in economics in a way. I've talked about earlier in a, some penology how uh, these pirates uh, are um, persiflage or homage of this older comic by Charlier and drawn by Victor Hubignon. Um, and of course you have some racial stereotypes and, and national stereotypes that you nobody would uh, like that today. But that's just, you have to, to read this in, in the context when it was created. And here we have Asterix in Belgium. Uh, with some nice homage to Hergé and Peter Bruegel, um, which was obviously the template for uh, this picture here uh, of our heroes celebrating at the end of the story, like they always do. And, and over the years you have learned all the, the names of these characters here, which are translated, of course, into German. And so they have real fun names, but it's uh, of no use for you, I think, if I uh, quote these German names of them. Um, but all, all Germans will know them, <laughs> at least when there are some uh, as old as I am. I think well, the younger ones today, it vanishes a bit uh, because because of the superhero uh, movies and so on, uh, they rather uh, tend to know about the Avengers or something like that. So then another of these uh, Staple Together comics here, um, the Big Valley or um, the, the Große Graben, the, the Big Gap. Um, this is of course not Asterix, but some other comic that was published in Ips here. Uh, which is basically Romeo and Juliet uh, put in the times of Asterix and Obelix. The Odyssey. Um, ah, the, by the way, this was the start after the death of uh, René Goscinny uh, of Uderzo taking over the writing duties as well. And to be honest with you, even though a lot of fans complained about the quality of these comics, as a kid, I haven't, I, I didn't notice that. Uh, I read it, and for me, it was true Asterix and and fun as always. And uh, up to this day, I really love, uh, for instance, the Odyssey here, uh, written and drawn by Albert Uderzo. Uh, here we have um, Sean Connery, aka Na uh, 006, uh, in it. Let's say here you you have him, but even more, um, yeah, Asterix and Obelix in the Holy Land, and this was um, maybe the f favorite scene of my uh, pastor priest way back then. Why, when I did the confirmation, he couldn't make a believer out of me, but uh, he impressed me with um, with his knowledge about Ast uh, about Asterix for sure. Here. Okay, you don't have to be a Bible fanatic to get the reference for uh, this little picture here of them in Bethlehem. They even mention it here. But some, at some place, uh, the whole stuff here really went downhill. I think this, the son of Asterix was the very first uh, Asterix uh, that I did.
didn't like as much as the others and it got worse and worse asterisk in the at the Morganland in the uh, in the east was decent asterisk in Mestria maybe even so but this one here uh, was terrible this here was actually a bit better drawn by Didier Conrad uh, and this is the most recent Asterix album so far, uh, The Daughter of Vercingetorix, um, written again by Ferry and uh, drawn by Didier Conrad. Uh, there was some book like uh, Asterix in France in between. I sold my copy because I really couldn't enjoy this book here and uh, unfortunately this is true for this book as well. Um, the art is pretty excellent, very close to the original, but the story doesn't do it for me. It, I found it really condescending towards uh, yeah, the Friday for Future uh, movement basically and, and not funny. I mean you can f make fun out of everything in the world but this was not funny to me. Uh, a lot of Asterix fans really enjoyed this book here so uh, take my word and, and my judgment with a grain of salt. Maybe you will enjoy it. I haven't and yeah, but all the trouble that I have with the more recent iterations of Asterix can't spoil my fun that I always have when I pick up one of the older issues here of Asterix. Um, revisiting some uh, joy that I had in my childhood, but it's really not only about nostalgia, nostalgia, not nostalgia, uh, that I have, but these are just damn good comics. So. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.